Welcome to my channel. This is Lacia75, the Black Unicorn. I'm taking you guys with me as I took a hike, walk through uh, Kunku National Forest in the central region of Ghana. So that same day, I did the canopy walk, which uh, was deftifyingly scary because it's over a hundred feet high. We did the hike after we did the canopy walk and I was trying to film as much of it as I can so I can share it with you all. Uh, we didn't actually know you could do a hike until it ended and other people were doing that second portion of the hike. That is an additional cost. Typically you'll pay for that hike when you pay for the fee to enter in to do the canopy walk. So during the hike, the guide, because uh, there's not a rain, it's not like a forest preserve ranger or anything like that, but like, let's say the guide was telling us about the forest itself, the types of animals that live within the forest, and then the type of um, species of trees and different vegetation that they have in there. Now, as you all can see, I'm very much, very much a city girl, and uh, I am not used to animals and insects. Uh, especially ones I can't see, but I can hear them. A little bit of a freak out, tripping over my feet too. Definitely terrified of the fact that there may be snakes. And there was. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't see any of the snakes. Some other people saw the snakes before I was even aware of it. And my guy was aware of it, quickly grabbed me by the hand, told me to follow his footsteps and to walk fast now. You don't got to tell me twice. You know, I'm black. I see black, black people running. I'm going to run too. And if I run, I'm going to fall off that cliff. And he knew that because he was like, just calmly walk behind me quickly, quickly, quickly. And that's what I did. So I actually never saw the snake that other people saw and were talking about. Nor did I step in the ant hole mile with fire ants. A few people did that too. <laughs> Especially this one chick. Yeah, she just was standing up in there. The ants crawled all the way up her shirt with biting her boobies and I was like oh my lord Jesus Christ she showed her hole behind trying to get the ants off um, but it was a nice nature walk here he's telling us a bit about what we are looking at Okay, so this is Kakum Forest, and it's a forest reserve. So before 1931, the communities around the park were the custodians of the forest. So it became necessary for the Ghana government to preserve this place or to protect this place. So in 1931, this place was gazetted as a forest reserve. So what we do is, we have the Community Resource Management Unit here in Kakum National Park, also department in one line division of the Forestry Commission. So because we've taken the forest from the surrounding communities, what we do is we come together with NGOs and then we provide the surrounding communities with some basic needs they may need for their survival in order to prevent them from encroaching into the forest to cut trees, poaching or so ever. So we build schools and then anything they think they may need, they bring it on board and then the park also decides on it and then provide their needs for them. So this is a protected area. And then in 1992, when Ghana became a democrat, this place was officially declared as a national park. 
uh, we had Kakum National Park in 1992. So we have various species of wild animals in the forest. The reason why I'm saying wild animals is that this is Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission. So when we talk about wild animals or wildlife, plant and animals in their natural state. So we classify the animals here as wild animals. We have 100 species of reptiles, mammals, and amphibians. We have 600 species of butterflies, and then 300 species of birds. But as at now, only 264 has been confirmed. So most of the animals here are nocturnal. They usually come out at night. That's why we have a tree house. You will definitely see the tree house where people camp overnight with a guide. And then we do the night hiking where we see most of the animals and then the calls as well. Unlike the zoo where the animals have been tamed, here it's not like that. They are in their natural habitat. So they have their own freedom of moving in the forest, finding food and the rest. So for you to come across any animal is by chance. The noise we make also scare them so they hide themselves from us. Okay. So going forward, we may talk about some species of trees, special ones of course, their uses and then the rest. So we talk about this tree you are seeing over here. I don't know if you've heard of ebony tree. Yeah. Yes, this is the ebony tree. Mm -hmm. In our local dialect, we call it kusibri. Some also call it, the botanical name is Geospherus sanzaminica. Some also call it elephant comb. So considering the back, this is the tree where you can locate it in elephants located areas. So if you see this tree, they are not common. The black keys of pianos were made from this tree, but now they don't get it, so they use plastics instead. And then whenever the elephants in the forest are feeling itchy, this is the type of tree they scratch their bodies against it. It's very strong. It's going deep into the forest. We have two over here, so you can just look at it. So this is the first thing we talk about this. Going forward, we talk about some layers of life we have in Kakum. So if you have any questions, you just draw my attention and then we enjoy everything. Here's a look at the canopies, like, uh, God, I was so happy to get off. Uh, but anyways. So within this um, forest, there is a, like, a tree house. Now, I thought I had footage of the tree house, but for whatever reason I can't find that footage so they let you take a, a spin a night in this tree house and it's really high up on this giant old tree that's toxic to certain insects and animals however this tree house y'all is a hot ghetto mess I mean it's like literally like slabs of wood up at the top when they made like a box four boxes with a, a slate of a piece of wood and a piece of foam for a mattress. It's highly disgusting, and there's no bathroom. They said there's a little shack bathroom at the bottom there. Cha, please, I would not, mm -mm. no, never. This is a view from the top really quickly, and then that's pretty much all the footage I got of the tree house, but it was interesting to see indeed. Um, so while we were there, he was pointing out the age of a lot of these trees, how old they are, how how the roots of the tree intertwine into the ground and how old they are. There's this big giant tree he showed us that's over like, I don't know, four or 500 years old, he said. Stands extremely tall, but the trunk of this tree is just crazy. It has to be like five feet across at, at the uh, base level. Um, but it was a beautiful tree, hard to capture on my little phone because it is a massive tree, but I was trying my best. There's some pictures of it so that you can try to see it better. Um, it's just an idea. And that's just like a corner 
of the tree. That's not even the full trunk of the tree because it spreads out. But I just wanted to share that with you guys because it was pretty amazing to see that. I'm thinking in California where they have the big redwoods, you probably will see like huge trees like this with large tree trunks and very high up, very tall, look all the way up to the sky to try to see the top and you still can't see it. That's what this um, forest felt like. This is one tree? Yes, one tree. <laughs> oh my God. How old is it? You know, some of the trees, we detect the number of trees according to the rings you do them. All you need to hear from this now guys it's just nature and it's natural form not even me talking just nature And we're at the exit. All done. Whew. Tell you what, you'll never catch me on those canopy walks again in life. One and done.